In this video, I'm going to briefly introduce pan crustacea. We have three learning goals. First, we want you to distinguish pan crustacea as a group within pan arthropoda. We want you to also be familiar with the main lineages within pan crustacea. And last, we want you to know the distinguishing features of Melacostrica, Cirripedia, or barnacles, and Hexapoda, or the insects. Recall that on the metazoan phylogeny, we are within the protostomes group. Protostomes are part of the bilateria, and they're characterized by having a blastopore that develops into the mouth, and many have spiral mosaic cleavage. Remember, arthropods don't have spiral mosaic cleavage. They are an exception. If I zoom in on the phylogeny of protostomes, we can see that we are in the ecdysozoa group. Ecdysozoans shed an external cuticle or exoskeleton, and arthropods are one of the lineages within them. We don't really ever talk about tardigrades or onychophorans, but if you look closely at the ecdysozoan lineage, we do spend some time talking about nematodes. If we think about panarthropoda as a whole, it's important to remember that this is the most diverse group of animals in the tree of life. So they sort of do everything. There's innumerable different kinds of body forms, life histories, and ecologies. In this video, we're talking about two groups, the malacostricans and the hexapods, both of which are part of the pan crustacea. To give you a better idea of what we're talking about, we're going to look quickly at a phylogeny of protostomes in general. If you look closely, you'll notice here we have the Lophotrochozoans, which we've spent some previous videos talking about. And if we move on, we'll see here's Ecdysozoa, and of course, Nematoda. And then for this video, we're talking specifically about the pan crustacea. The pan crustacea are here and indicated by our red node. Pan arthropoda includes all of these groups, but we've already spent a lot of time talking about chelicerates specifically in previous videos. Notice that in pan crustacea, two groups should stand out to you the hexapods and the malacostricans. We don't really talk about branchiopods in Biz2C, but we do spend a lot of time talking about hexapods or insects and malacostricans, which includes things like crabs and shrimp, lobsters, etc. Given that insects or hexapods are part of the pan crustacea, this is easily the most diverse clade on the tree of life. And there are three groups that we're going to briefly discuss. The malacostricans, or crabs, lobsters, shrimps, and then two, the cirripedes, or barnacles, and three, of course, the hexapods. I'm going to cover the hexapods in more detail in a separate video. But here I'm going to introduce their main features. Let's first look at the malacostricans, which includes crabs, shrimp, and lobsters. There's about 50,000 species, and they occupy marine, freshwater, and terrestrial habitats. Given their diversity, it should be no surprise that they also occupy a wide variety of ecological niches. So many are scavengers, some are filter feeders, and they can also be predators. One thing to notice is that although you usually think of crabs and shrimp and lobsters when you think of malacostricans, there are also many terrestrial forms, including things like isopods or roly-polies. Isopods are also part of Malacostrica, and they are usually terrestrial. Although not included in our previous phylogeny, Cirripedia belongs to the pan crustacea. Cirripedia are mostly referred to as barnacles, and they are sessile filter feeders. Some are ectoparasitic on whales. They're entirely, entirely marine, and they typically encrust in shallow water like in the intertidal zone. One thing that's interesting about them is that they are sequential hermaphrodites. 
So they can be either male or female, and they can change in between, but they can't be male and female at the same time. They have internal fertilization, and they also have external fertilization. There are two main ecological forms. The acorn barnacles are the ones you typically associated with things like whales or in the rough intertidal, whereas the gooseneck barnacles are actually on a short stalk, and they're oftentimes in slightly deeper water. Hexapods are the most diverse lineage within Pancrustacea. They're typically referred to as hyperdiverse. There's at least 850,000 described species, and as such, they sort of do everything. They can be terrestrial or aquatic, including freshwater and marine. They can be parasites, scavengers, predators, and even some other kinds of ecologies like parasitoids, which we're going to talk about briefly in our next video. They have three tagmata, a head, thorax, and abdomen, with one pair of antennae, three pairs of legs, and if they're present, one or two pairs of wings. So insects are among the groups within Metazoa that have evolved flight. Given the diversity, we'll spend a few more slides talking about them. One of the distinguishing features of insects is that they have mouth parts that are specialized to perform specific functions. Their mouth parts are oftentimes referred to as mandibles, and they can be modified for chewing, such as this beetle here. This is oftentimes thought of as the ancestral condition, and there's many modifications thereafter, including a piercing, sucking type of mandible that's used by things like mosquitoes, a siphoning mandible, which is used to draw in nectar from things like lepidopteran, so butterflies and moths, and last but not least, a sponging mouth part, which is most often associated with flies. Insects don't have lungs, and they respire through a highly specialized system called a tracheal system, which is a network of fine tubes that extend throughout the entire body. Now these tubes operate mostly by diffusion, although some muscular contractions can occur, which will allow oxygen to diffuse more readily in the body. And they're connected to outside holes called spiracles. These spiracles are on the outside of the body and they allow oxygen to come in and go through the tracheal system and then it permeate through all of the tissues. Any discussion of insects should involve some exploration of flight. So remember that flight is not homologous among metazoans. It's involved multiple times independently. Think of things like birds and bats and pterosaurs. They have independently evolved flight. And so if you were to look at their wings, you would notice that they are distinctly different from one another. Flight is homologous among insects, however, so it only evolved one time. That doesn't mean that all insects can fly. There's an entire group, which we'll talk about in our next video, that's not able to fly. So flight is not a synapomorphy for all insects. It is a synapomorphy for some, but not all. Keep in mind also that wings have been lost multiple times within insects. So there are examples of flightless flies and flightless lepidopterans just as examples.